okay, you here for the Super Bowl. All right, on the Lord's Sabbath day, you know that this day is the Lord's Sabbath day, not Sunday, right? Okay, so what are we commanded to do on the Lord's Sabbath day? We're supposed to rest, right? What is that going into? Real quick, real quick, what is that going into? Give me uh, Exodus 20 and 8. Watch this, listen good to this. Because if you know you're an Israelite, God requires something of you, and that's to keep his laws. I'm going to show you a law that we're supposed to keep. My sister, you, you understand what's coming out right now? Listen to this. Come here. Read that. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. You know your nationality? Okay, that's what we're teaching. Give me a few minutes. I'm going to show you exactly who God says you are. Because we're coming out here. Show her the Bible. Show her the book. We're coming out here with God's words. We're coming out here with the book of life, the Bible. We're not teaching you the Quran. We're not teaching you our own notebook. We brought God's words to show his people who they are. That's right. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Eli. Actually, read that. Exodus 20 and 8. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So now, God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, let me ask you a question. When is the Sabbath day? Okay, it's today. But in, in Christianity, which... Were you you're a Christian? Okay. And Christianity teaches Sunday. That's why you have church service on Sunday. So I just wanted to clear that up with you. I want you to understand. Saturday is God's Sabbath day. From Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, that's the Sabbath day. Read. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So now he says, remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Why do you think that God says to remember the Sabbath day? <laughs> why, why do you think he say remember the Sabbath day? Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I just want to make sure you're engaging with me. All right, read that. I said I would scatter them into corners. So God says that the Israelites, they will be scattered into corners, right? Says, you listening? You listening? God says that he will scatter the Israelites, the children of Israel, Blacks and Hispanics into corners, right? Read. I said I will scatter them into corners. Uh -huh. I will make the remembrance of them to see. And now he says that he will make the remembrance of the, who they are and their culture, their heritage. He will make all of that to cease. Come on. From among men. From among men. So why did God say to remember the Sabbath? Because we forgot. We forgot our true culture. We forgot our heritage. You understand that, sister? Read it again. Go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Read it. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Read it out. Remember the Sabbath day. So now God says to remember the Sabbath day. Right? Come on. To keep it holy. To keep it holy means it's separate from every other day. You got seven days in a week. God says give me this one day and keep it holy. I'm going to show you what that's going into. Read Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So from Sunday to Friday, you have to, you have all the time in the world to do your work. Come on. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. But the seventh day, the seventh day of the week is what? Saturday. God says to keep it holy. Read, it, read that part again. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. What is commanded of the Israelites to do on the seventh day? On the Sabbath day. Give me Exodus. Give me no. Give me Leviticus 23 and verse 3. No. Hebrews 10 and 25. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Read. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Read it out. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another. And hey, let me ask y'all a question. Y'all Christians? Y'all Christians? Yeah. We're believers of God too. What does it mean to believe in God? Okay. Okay. Okay, so what, what does God require of us in, in belief? So, if, for example, if, if um, you have a husband, right? You require of him to show you the actions of actually loving you, right? So, if you love God, you believe in God's existence, what does he require of us? Being Christians. 
There you go. So obey his commandments. Do you guys know your nationalities according to God? Okay, which one? You got you got all the nations that are you got 18 nations, right? God has a chosen people. I know you know that. So now, according to the Bible, what nation do you come from if he created 18 nations? That's what we're teaching. Okay. The chosen people are who? The Israelites. Is that who you're saying you're coming from? Or you're not sure? Okay. And you just said the, ch the children of God is the Israelites, right? Right? Okay. So now, what nation do you come from? So you're not, I'm going to show you. Give me a few minutes. I'm going to show you really quick, all right? Read Deuteronomy chapter 28. Watch this, sister. Watch this. Because look, we Christians. We Christians, all right? But we're the Israelites. We're the Israelites. Remember, and the Christian, Acts chapter 11, verse 26. Watch this. Acts 11 and 26. Now I want you to get us confused. We're not Christianity. you Christianity, right? Okay. Christians. We're followers of Christ, all right? Watch this. Acts chapter 11 and verse 26. Take it out. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So the disciples, which were who? Followers of Christ. But what was their nationality? What was the disciples' nationality? Uh, they were the Israelites. Okay. The Israelites were, the disciples were the Israelites. And it says the disciples were what? And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So the Christians, the real Christians, are the Israelites. You understand that? So now, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let me show you real quick who you truly are. Because that's, that's our job. Our job is to come out here and teach the people, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the truth. The truth of who they've been they've been cut off from. Uh, that's what I'm about to show you. I'm about to show you. No, not necessarily. Watch this. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. In the book of Deuteronomy, you know who's speaking? Who's the, the orator or whatever? Moses, right? He's speaking to the nation of Israel in the wilderness at this point, right? Read. To observe, to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now he's warning the children of Israel. He said, if you, if you break these uh, commandments that I give you, curses is going to come upon you and overtake you, meaning they're going to overpower you. So now we got to read some of these curses to identify who they are, the Israelites, right? Go to verse 46. Verse 46, and they shall be upon thee for a sign. Now, they is talking about what? Verse 45, read. Moreover, all these curses, all of they, the curses, shall be what? Upon thee for a sign. What does a sign do? It lets you know or identify something, right? So we know that we're on Northside Drive because we see the sign. So God says that, or Moses was speaking to the Israelites. He said, all these curses, they're going to be for a sign for what? To identify who the children of Israel are today, right? Verse 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So now, therefore, meaning because you broke God's commandments, you're going to have to serve your enemies. Watch this. Which the Lord shall send against thee. It says, which the Lord shall send against thee. So these, the, the people that came against us as a nation, they wasn't sent by themselves. God sent them against us. You understand that? Read. That's what the Bible says, right? In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. So in hunger, thirst, and nakedness. You want food? Who you got to go to? Who do we go to for our nourishment, our food? The grocery store, right? The who owns those grocery stores? God says we're going to have to go to somebody. I, I didn't say it. I'm, I'm asking you a question. I didn't say it. 
I said, who do we go to? Because we're fulfilling this, right? This is Bible prophecy. He says we're going to have to go to another nation for the want of food, thirst, and hunger, right? And I'm asking you, who do we go to? Which nation? Do we go to our own nation? No. No. We go to who? The so-called Caucasians, right? We go to Chinese. Right, right, I'm just... It's the truth. We go to all the other nations for all the things that we want, right? Read that last part again. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness. So you want the sunny water? You want frugal water? You're going to have to go to another nation. But read the top part again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. What did God call them? That's what the Bible says. He said we're going to have to go to another nation, which is our enemies for the want of all things. This is a curse that we're reading. We're identifying who the children of Israel are today. The so-called white man, he can go to another white man and get his food and his drink, drink right? We can't do that. So what, who is this talking about? Who is this talking about? I just want to... Yeah. What did Jesus have Christ got to do with that? Hold that. Matthew 15 and verse 24. Watch this. I'm going to show you. Matthew 15 and verse 24. What does Christ have to do with all of this? We're teaching nationality. That's my point. That's what I'm, I'm, not, I'm misunderstanding you all. We just read that. We just read Acts chapter 5. He said he died to give repentance to Israel. He didn't come and die for everybody. Remember Matthew 15, 24. Acts 10 and 34. Read that. Acts 10 and 34. I got you. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Let's do this. Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth. And said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation. So God is not a respecter of persons. That's, that's the point you want. What? Right? Watch this. Read until verse 36. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel. Oh, bring it out. Unto who? So who does God have respect for? What's that in Exodus? But it just says, God gave his word unto Israel. So who is that talking about? He has respect for the nation of Israel. Watch this. Children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. Yes, right. But I thought the Bible just says that He has no respect to persons. What is it talking about? He has respect unto who? And have respect unto them. Okay. So God has respect for the nation of Israel. You understand that? But the point was that what was your point by what that scripture? My point was that God has no respect for a person, so anybody can receive the gift of salvation. That was my point. What scripture is that? The scripture that I was reading, uh, coming from. Was it just says no respect of a person. God is a respect, no respect of person. Read it again. Go to Acts. Read. I just showed you who salvation was for. Don't ask me. You should be asking, what does the Bible say? That's about that? right. Don't ask me. I, you you should care less about what my what my opinion is. No, I, listen. I don't even care what my opinion is. Why would you say that? I'm just saying. This, this, this is what I'm getting If you're not an Israelite, you will not be saved. That's, 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 that's what right. we're saying. That's the gospel. Matthew 15, 24. Let's go to it. Bring it listen, no, sis, I'm you can't go by your emotion. That's, that's what we always do. According to the Bible, I'm going to give you the scripture. I'm going to give you the scripture. All right, watch this. Matthew 15, 24. Matthew. You got your Bible right in front of you. Like I said, we do not deal with emotion. 
Let him see it, Cap. <laughs> Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You are the lost sheep of the nation of Israel. God's people are destroyed because they don't know who they are. So what are we doing? We're teaching you that you are the Israelites. You're not. That. Read it again. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said. But Christ answered the disciples and said, come on. I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's right. But means only. I am not sent but only to the house of Israel. Right. So you're basically saying that if you're not Israelite, you're not, you don't have a... Uh, what, what is your nationality? What's your nationality? You're so-called African-American? If you're so-called African-American, if you're so-called black, Hispanic, Native Indian, Christ came for you. Romans chapter 9. Bring it out. Oh, yeah. Romans chapter 9. Listen good to this. Start at verse 2. All right, one. Get the book of Romans. I want you to read along with us. New Testament. Romans chapter 9. Watch this. This is the last scripture. Go to Romans chapter 9. I want you to read along with us. Like I said, we're coming with God's word. We're not coming with our emotions. Right. Right. Romans. I'm saying we're not coming with our emotions. Listen good. Chapter 9 in verse 1. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So Paul says his brethren and his kinsmen, meaning his nation, is according to the flesh. Watch this. Who are Israelites? Who are who? Who are Israelites? So who is called brethren? The Israelites. Come on. To whom pertain the adoption? To whom belongs the adoption and the glory? Uh-huh. And the, the kingdom and the covenant. Uh-huh. Both covenants, the new and the old and the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. And the service of God and the promises. All the promises is for the Israelites. Right. Read verse 7. Verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Who came from Abraham? It says that all the nations of the earth is not God's children. Read it again. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Who came from uh, Abraham? Ishmael came from Abraham, right? Today, who are the Ishmaelites? The Arabs. You understand? Read that last part again. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Meaning who? The Israelites. Isaac had Jacob. Jacob had the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's who you are and that's who we are. We are the Israelites according to the Bible. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the Israelites. Salvation is for you. And with that, we say shalom. Don't you got a party to go to? Overpass, pass around, around the loop, around there, or something like that? What the hell? Don't you got a party you got to go to? Say something, son. Need y'all by 12. Big body sumo flow. If you bout show crown. Kudos though, baby rap yo, town is the Uno Dos, Uno Dos, that is the Uno Dos, one, two, one, two. Hey Siri, how's the traffic? Here's the traffic.
traffic. <laughs> Two hours. It's not even that many damn cars out there. What the hell's going on? Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.